do, what it do, what it do. Conscious by nature, CBN, the sports edition. Mm. And let's just say first things first, man. I know what you're thinking. So friendly reminder, whatever I say, just do the opposite. That's a genius. <laughs> That's a scholar. <laughs> I'm a champ. What's happening? Uh, what's good? <laughs> hey, you know, you know we was going to do the comeback on who picked what? You know what I'm saying? Hey. So... I you know picked the stinker too. I picked the stinkers. I, I really didn't pick that many stinkers, man. It was a lot of bullshit out there. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of bullshit. We're gonna go through uh super wild card weekend real quick with a couple uh updates. So first one on the list, Seattle, San Francisco. Goddamn, what did you see? You, you know what, money though? You weren't that off. I mean, that's a two-point loss, you know. And I'm thinking, you know, the Niners is really gonna handle them. You know, when I went back and I watched the tape, you know, of our last conversation, I'm like, okay, uh, Gino was out there. They they was playing like they, they could win that football game. So not too far off. You know, of course, the Niners got the dub, but Seattle, okay. I like that. Yeah, man. Seattle's just a few more players away, but they were right there in the mix until they had that fumble. And I believe there was, uh, wasn't there an interception as well or some type of, they had a turnover bug for a little bit which kind of spread that thing open. You know what I'm saying? McCaffrey, you know how he get down. The 49ers just, they just a little too much. A little too much. Man, motherfucking Geno cost his ass some money. Mm. Had he been able to freak that off, he was 35 million guaranteed. Mm. But you're going to be about a $19 million quarterback because you fumbled the fucking football and then right after that two plays later you threw a pick and then right after that was another fumble and then the wheels just fell the fuck off and they just blew the doors wide open and yeah that shit just went left but I thought Seattle would give them a hell of a matchup Walker ran the ball on them um shit they moved the ball up and down the field Metcalf had his way on the outside against Ford like shit I told they weak against the pass nigga so you know yeah so moving on from that shit man uh what Jacksonville Chargers? God damn it, man! Man, I tell you, genius, you called it with the culture, bro. T- talk to me. You know, I said it, and I'll say it again, man. I don't trust that dude. Honestly, he should lose his job. To be honest, they For fired real. the offensive coordinator. How are you gonna fire the offensive coordinator when the defense gave up the draws? I mean, and that's his bread and butter, is it not? Yeah. I mean, you got walked back down by Jacksonville, who really don't have no offense. No separators. Uh, not, nobody. I, I don't. I, I nigga. They got special niggas. Yeah, they got. They got. They got special, special niggas. niggas. Like like no, like. They're, 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 they're yeah. special niggas and they're super special. I, I mean, don't know if they got I, that I'm type ne- of cat. I never said they had a super motherfucker, but they got special players out there. You well, know what I'm saying? It, it's only few teams that got super mm-hmm. players. Like San Francisco has Debo Samuels. He's super. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't say McCaffrey's a super player, but I would say Debo's super. Mm-hmm. And then George Kittle is fucking super. So they got two super players out there. Mm-hmm. Kittles and Debo Samuels who just can just dominate. Yeah, oh. It definitely was surprising to see the Chargers come out with the, you know, with such a big lead. Not really. I, I wasn't when you, expecting when you, that. When you, throw, when you throw four interceptions and a fumble, that's five turnovers. I'm, I'm pretty no sure doubt. that's what the score should have been. <laughs> I, I mean, nobody, I, nobody, I don't think any, many people expected that, you know, uh, but for the, for the swing, I mean, it makes all the sense in the world. Like, why would they fire the OC over the d- defensive coordinator? Because you put up three fucking points in the second half, bro, but they didn't stop shit. It don't <laughs> fucking matter. They, mm. And you know what? You, you didn't put up no points and you had no turnovers. They lost the turnover battle. Five to nothing and Ooh. won the game. Man, come on! It's not like it's not like you went out and did a Jacksonville and turned that shit over a bunch of times. You know what you had? A bunch of dumbass penalties. Mm-hmm. A bunch of stupid ass defensive penalties yeah, that kept drives alive for Jacksonville. Just a bunch of dumb shit. And you know what, Justin Herbert. You didn't get it done again. They keep yeah. annoying this motherfucker as the one of the top five quarterback. You still don't get it done. So, yeah. yeah. I'm also curious to, as to what Bosa said to that ref. I would like to know. It's, it's amazing how they don't have we, the mic. We all want to know. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Did he drop a, drop a special N-word? I mean, you know, mm-hmm. he must have said something for the ref to circle back 
and be like, yo, what you say? The Bosa boys is uh we already racist. know that. They we racist. Already know, we already know that. We already know that. We ain't gonna get into that though. We ain't gonna get into that. Uh, what we is gonna get into is the first game on Sunday. Bills Dolphins. Um yeah. a good one. See fucking around, knowing the team twice a year and then having to play them three times, you know, and and, and and this has been a pattern for the Buffalo Bills all season. Dominate in time of possession, dominate in yards, dominate in every category, but find a way to turn the ball over and just allow them to stay in the fucking game. Like, I don't, I don't understand. And you know what? Your coach is a fucking he, you know, a guy who should be fired, him. Mm. He should be fucking fired for that clock management all game, mm. fucking long, mm. all the whole second half. You want to know what? That motherfucker probably cost him about four games this year doing that dumb shit. I ain't saying nothing, but he one of the worst fucking football coaches in the NFL, man. I hate y'all fucking coach, man. Get rid of him. <laughs> so... That that's a lot. <laughs> I don't think he cost us four games. Um, just 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 to start off, uh, I picked us to lose this game. Watched us last week. I picked us to lose big to the Bills by double the score. I was right with the thirty four on the Bills. I was wrong with thirty one for Miami. I said that defense would be the only shot that we had, and they came to play. Um, we we are rivals in this division. Every game that we played this season has been separated by four points, 85 to 81. So uh, it was surprising seeing, uh, you know, we didn't, we weren't, we weren't in the game because of Skylar Thompson. That, that kid is a seventh round rookie and he's a bum. Okay. We got in there because of turnovers. We got in there because you guys had a big lead and Josh Allen is trying to air it out against Xavier Howard. We got in there because we no, got some pressure. Let me tell you, remember we what got I told you? I hate fucking and Ken we, Dorsey. And we caused him to fumble, and we got I some big turnovers. fucking Ken Dorsey. There I hate is. fucking Ken Dorsey, too. You, you ahead big. Why are you trying to air it out with, with John Brown against Xavier Howard? Let's not do that. Now, Stephon Diggs going to eat. He going to eat. He's a he's a dynamic. That's one of those guys, again, that's a special player that, that can do what he want to do. So you let me ask you, eating. let me let me let me just say this before the genius go. We ran the ball off tackle for 11 yards with James Cook, right? We take Stefan Diggs and Cook both off the field. We throw the play action and throw the fade corner. If John Brown keeps running, that's a touchdown. Bro just breaks off the route and tight genius. Tell me, talk to me, man. Well, you know, I, I thought it would be a close game simply because the two know each other that well. Right. Uh, the turnovers bother me. Right. Um, the play calling bothers me a little bit. I'm concerned with that uh, as they move forward. Um, sometimes my man, Josh Allen, sometimes he throws some wild shit and it's like, bro, you're better than that. Why? Why? You know, so um, I did not expect it to be that close down to the wire like that on a fourth and one type deal. Um, you know, young coach on Miami side, rookie you know, coach, never been a head coach before, and assistant a, his entire career. Let me ask there's you. There's a reason why. Let, let me ask you this, D. You know, being that he's a young coach, there's a lot going on. He's play calling. You know, I I think I saw Dan Orlowski break it down on ESPN yeah. about you got so much going on in 40 seconds, right? When you're the coach, you're the play caller. You got people in your ear. Now that's no excuse. You should have a play. Right. But I believe they said, hey, first down. And then they said, nope, that's actually fourth and one. Right. You that's know, what he you, said in his in his uh, media availability is that somebody told him it was first down. So he pulled the first down play, but then they turned around and it was fourth. And uh, but it was just bad clock management, yeah. bad. It, and I agree with money 100 percent. But what, he has to take that L. That was a lot of that bad shit going on the whole game. And you was it, on the sideline vaping and shit, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, straight up. You know, so I mean, if you if, was you if high, you know motherfucker, chips, was you high when when the chips is stacked against you, and you and you and you got a you got an opportunity like that, you got to be se severely focused on what you're doing because, like I said, I know even though he he feels like you, next man up, 
we all know that that kid couldn't beat the Bills with his arm. We know you had to be tricky and do all the shit that you needed to do in defense, but it made it a game. But, you know, good luck to the Bills. You know, you guys, like I say, I don't think you're going to be able to make those same mistakes against uh, – Hey, man, we're going to talk about that. All right, we're moving on, man. We, man, Let's get fuck out of here. Vikings <laughs> Giants, nigga. Yeah, Vikings Giants, man. Another one where I said I thought the Giants would get that, and they did. Right? Um, shout out to Brian Dayball. I'm missing for for just just coaching the hell out that team, man. Sure you know hand, saying? man. Running that rock. Shout out to Danny Dimes for playing hell of five football, throwing that thing like like a spear come out of his hand, man. <laughs> Toting that thing. I mean, and what did I say? I said I don't trust Kirk Cousins. Mm-mm. Not now, Mm-mm. not ever. And what did he do? Shit the bed. Shit the motherfucking bed. You shit the bed. Yeah. How you going to throw on fourth and eight a three-yard dump? Come on, man. What did you? I'm glad that happened. Vikings, y'all have a good time watching the rest of the playoffs. Yeah, they definitely deserve to go home for the the way that he played and the decisions that Kirk Cousins made out there. You know, I, I, had, I had my money on them to win that game 28-24. Uh, silly of me. Silly to pick that motherfucker to do anything right. You know, uh, the Giants deserve to win every part of that game. They're playing tough football, man. I think, you know, that's a hard out for whoever they playing right now. Uh, The Giants got a lot of momentum. They're playing good football. They ball. You know, the hardest thing to defend in the NFL is a mobile quarterback. Daniel Jones is that, and he's showing accuracy and poise from the pocket. I tell you, man, they ball know how to coach them quarterbacks. Up. Boy, he's something special with the quarterback. So um, I didn't pick the job. I thought the Vikings would win on the turf at home. Um, I thought Justin Jefferson would have his way. Yet again, he was running wide open out there. You got to be able to get my man the ball at some point in the game. I mean, the man is, when I mean wide open, I mean the man is wide Mm. the fuck open. Mm. But now you wide open all over the beach. So fucking... Mm. uh, Good luck to uh, the Giants and shit. So, uh, late game, Bengals, Ravens. Mm-hmm. Tough one, hard fought. Uh, what you got? Yeah, money, you were spot on, man. And matter of fact, I was about to text you because I'm like, man, the Ravens came to play ball. Oh, right? yeah. I mean, they came to play and they should have won the game. Mm-hmm. Point blank, period, right? On the goal line. Woo! Man, I mean, I know there were some questionable things with that. Some said that he was supposed to be getting pushed into the end zone. He decided to dive over the end zone. You too far away to be diving. You get the ball poked. It's going back the other way, 99. That's the key difference of the game right there. You got it sewn up, in my personal opinion. No doubt. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead and hand that ball off to J.K. Dobbins, too, if you will, please. Oh, he was pissed. He was pissed. You see what I'm saying? Like, so there were some things in there where – Hey, hey, Ravens, you had it. You had it. And you let it just slip away. I mean, I got to give it up to you again, champ. I mean, just like the Seahawks game, your prediction was very close. I mean, you had 22-21 Ravens. That's one point, you know, and they should have won the game. And, And that's similar to, once again, with Miami and Buffalo. These are rivalry games. These teams play each other tough. It don't matter what's going on. Tyler Huntley, he played a hell of a game for a backup. I'm like, God damn, it was exciting. The Ravens should be fishing too. I mean, uh, the Bengals should be fishing right now, you know, but it's all about how the ball bounces, man. That shit was crazy. I heard some earlier today and it was like, how would you rather lose a football game? Would you rather lose it like that? Or would you rather lose it by getting blown out? I would hate to lose it the way they lost it. I'd rather get blown out than lose it. Fuck that. that. I'd rather lose it like that. Oh, that, that means I'm in it the whole game. I got this emotion. I got this feeling. And yes, that shit come crashing down, nigga. But the worst feeling is the world is to look up at the scoreboard and realize, fuck, I ain't got no chance, well, nigga. That is a terrible me. fucking feeling to have. I've been in that position. I looked up at the scoreboard, shit, 42 to 6, and you just like, they pilling us right now. We can't bro. do shit. But you know what I mean? On the goal line to hey, win bro. It. We was in it, though. We was in it. You know what I mean? That shit is heartbreaking. 
Yeah, that, yeah. that shit feel worse than getting blown out. It does feel worse, mm-hmm. but I'd rather lose like that and be Knowing in you had it. and competing and playing hard and every play count and it come down to that and some shit like that happen. Right. Okay. Some shit. And it's like but, nothing you could do. It just happened. Shit happened. Shit happened. I get it. So yeah, not to get blown out, nigga. To have that feeling of just emptiness for the whole time, and you just get you can do it. Uh, Fuck no. Then you gotta sit there and take that shit. No, yeah. no. Yeah. At least the other game, you having fun. You compete, and everything means something. Every inch, every play, you playing for something. You not playing for nothing except for pride type That's shit. True. Like so. Um, damn. I, I mean, I knew you know I knew the Ravens had them pegged. Um, they beat them this year on Monday on, on Sunday night. It, it was somewhere around that score. Like they just own them on defense, man. I know it. And and they had they was up on them the week before big. And everybody thought Cincinnati's gonna blow their ass out. And you know what? The Ravens figured their ass out real quick <laughs> and, and shut that shit down. They mustered up three more points the rest of the game. So like I just had a feeling, but you know, um shit. It, it, it go that way, it bounced that way. And uh yeah, Bengals moving on and shit because motherfucker, you know why? Backup quarterback. And you know why? Because the Ravens don't cherish good things. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they about to lose a good thing. Motherfucker, you about to lose a good thing because you ain't paying. And all you had to do was pay him 250 guaranteed cash. Like shit, they gave Deshaun Watson 230 and this motherfucker ain't played in 519 game days. This motherfucker, United's MVP on the division. For real, like the Bengals, the second best team in that division. They've never beat Lamar. Lamar fucking owns them. Owns them, nigga. Every single time he plays, they lose. Yeah, no doubt, man. They got to pay that man. But I think it might be a little too late. Now. Oh, it's over. I mean, oh, because it's over. He, but that, that man that played this entire season, yeah. he didn't have to play. He should have sat out. He, he played on a good faith. Then when he get hurt, y'all talking on his name, like mm. it's over. Yeah, it's done. There's no fixing. All right. So uh, Monday night, Cowboys Bucks. I had a feeling. <laughs> Man, I, I thought the just because of the history of the Cowboys, you know what I'm saying? They usually piss down their leg. Yeah. Especially in the first round of the playoffs, right? And I thought they would do it again. I thought they would. I thought the Bucks would come out there and find themselves. They at home, find some type of running game, find something. What they found was some bullshit. They they out. They done. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No running game. No nothing. Tom Brady throwing how many passes? Sixty six. Mm-hmm. Come on, man. That not nah nah. That ain't it. So Cowboys, hell of a game. They did what they need to do. They supposed to do that. Yeah. You know they got a challenge next week, but we'll get into that later. That's my stinker that I'm talking about that I picked right there because I picked the Bucks to win that game and a close one, uh, but. They didn't. They, it, I'm gonna say they didn't show up. They didn't seem like they could do anything. Mm. Um, when, while Dallas was just out there, just having their way. To be completely honest, Dak Prescott, uh, good game. I mean, yeah, uh, it's, it's not what you usually expect because I, I say you, it's always some inconsistency with the Cowboys. But um, they look like they they ready they ready this year. They, maybe they can hold out and do a little bit more. Listen, man, Tom Brady ain't shit without no running game. They're last in rushing in the league. You know what I'm yep. saying? They couldn't muster up a goddamn thing all year. They couldn't muster up shit on Monday night. You know what I mean? And, and, and then on top of that, Dak looked poised. He was shredding them. Oh, yeah. Looking motherfuckers off, making the plays, throwing motherfuckers open. You know what I'm saying? They got the strongest run game left, right? Nigga with Pollard and, and Zeke. I know everybody talking about San Francisco, but Cowboy got a tough ass run game. You know what else though? Uh, it it makes sense when I look at it a little deeper. Like, damn, like the Cowboys is kind of tired of people talking shit about them. I, I felt like that when I was watching the game because they're the team with the better record, and we and y'all at home, mm. they played like this should be our fucking home. Yeah, and, like, and you know Tampa Bay ain't no fucking good. <laughs> That whole division is trash. Hot fucking garbage. So enough about him. Fuck QB12. You know how much I really fucking <laughs> love to hate Tom Brady. So uh, 
cool. I, I love to hate him too, but I can't talk bad about him. Because he might be coming to Miami next year. <laughs> <laughs> I feel it. We don't need you, bum. Yeah, so right. uh the ones is back out this week. Uh, they started up on Saturday. Uh Chiefs up first. Mm-hmm. Patrick Mahomes, 15. Um, some would say the best quarterback in football. Um, if you would, I wouldn't disagree with you. Um, against the young, hungry gunner, Trevor Lawrence. Good on Jacksonville for the show they put on against the Chargers. But this is a whole different ball game. Mm. <laughs> yes, sir. Mm. Uh, you know, Patty... It, it, Patty is number one. He's the he's the top QB in the league, mm-hmm. and the Chiefs are the number one team in the league. Them and the Eagles, you know. Yeah. So, so, so I, I see uh, Jacksonville not knowing what to do with the damn Chiefs. They're gonna get blown out. This is not gonna be a pretty game, in my in my estimation. What you got, Ty? Well, I think that the game will be just a touch close. I don't think it's gonna be a complete blowout. They played earlier in the season. They played them tough, all right? But this is a case where the Chiefs just have a little bit too much, I think. And Travis I think Kelsey? Yeah. I mean, yeah, man. I mean, I mean, you know, first of all, 15 is all you need. <laughs> I mean, you know, Travis Kelsey, they are loaded, right? Um, defensively, Chiefs are okay. They're not average the beaters, you know? So I think that the Jacksonville Jaguars can get something off, mm. you know? But at the end of the day, yeah, I think the Chiefs go ahead and handle that. Well, I, I'm, I'm gonna say this: um, the Chiefs are the number one seed by default mm-hmm. in the AFC, so mm-hmm. I'm not going to go read too much into them being the best team mm-hmm. in the AFC. All right, uh, Jacksonville played them real tough early on, early on, early on in the season mm-hmm. when the Chiefs were showing their dominance and Jacksonville didn't even know who the hell they were. Right. It's going to be a much different game, even though it's in Kansas city. I worry about the chiefs in this game. This is not going to be a walk in the park. The chiefs play a lot of man coverage and press coverage, bruh. They get real handsy. They get a lot of calls. I don't motherfucking know. Jacksonville got some pretty good outside receivers. Zay zone shows he can win one-on-one. Evan Ingram has shown like Evan Ingram, let me know. bro. He did. He's you know we talk about Travis Kelsey, but athletically, Evan Ingram is is more athletic than him. Mm. So like in the middle of that field, uh, when you talk about running backs, they got uh, Pachanko and um, McKinnon, but Travis Etienne is is both of those guys. Yeah, like so, be careful, Kansas City in this motherfucking game. Um, you know, Jacksonville got one hell of a pass rush with Josh Allen. He's a bad man, and no one's really talking about how he gets after the quarterback, how he bends. It reminds me a lot of Vaughn. Reminds me a lot of Vaughn. This is a fucking dangerous game for Kansas City. And all the pressure is on Kansas City. Once and, they again. Don't, and they don't have the weapons on the outside. <laughs> you see, that soon as the char- as soon as the season over, they're already salivating after Nuke Hopkins. They're, they went out and got Kadarius Tony. They're looking for anybody to play the X or the Z position. They don't have a guy. So yeah. who you got? Yeah, the, for me, I'm going to go Chiefs. I'm going to go Chiefs. I like them. Uh, I like them 28, 21. And uh, real quick, you know, Doug Peterson, man, he good ass coach. Yep. He good ass coach. And so yep. if they end up surprising them, there was several years ago, Jacksonville Jaguars versus the Denver Broncos. And they went in there in the Denver and took care of business and won that game. Shocked the whole damn world, Mark Brunel. So if they do it again, I wouldn't be surprised, but I do. I am going to go for the Chiefs to get that win. I definitely got the Chiefs, like I said. Uh, I got them winning the game uh, 34 to 20. I just feel like uh, I know the Chiefs are average at best, let's say defensively, but it's just going. they're going to score. And I think they're going to outscore them. And I think they're going to make one too many plays. And that, that defense is going to be just enough to hold them to a respectable score, but still a 14-point loss. You know, I, I don't think it's going to be that close. So <laughs> I'm going to go with uh, fucking Jacksonville, man. Um, sometimes you just got to go with the upset. 
sometimes you just got to go with what you feel. Remember what I said at the beginning of the show, people. Uh, so just remember, uh, <laughs> you just got to go with your gut. And something telling me this Jacksonville team is so damn dangerous right now. Um, tidbit fat. Uh, Doug Peterson replaced Andy Reid as Philadelphia's head coach. They won a Super Bowl. Okay. Um, Reed had never won a Super Bowl in Philadelphia. Um, tidbit fact. So, Doug Peterson is one hell of a coach. Took yeah. the worst team in football and made him a playoff team. Um, and got a home game. Won that. Now they're going to see the number one seed. I think they got what it takes. Um, I don't think Kansas City is invincible anymore. Um, Cincinnati proved that last year. Putting a little bit of chink in that armor. Um, no Tyreek Hill. I think he is a fucking special player. They should have probably never let him go. And this, and this, this right now, the playoffs is where it's going to show. Jacksonville, 33, Chiefs, 29. Eagles, Giants, division game. Holy shit. What's yeah, going on? Yeah, man. So here we go again, right? The, the third time's the charm for somebody. All right, man. You know, Giants, man, there's something. Something about these cats, man. They don't really have a name wide receiver. Shout out to Isaiah Hawkins. Man, fuck Isaiah Hawkins. Man, shout out to that cat. He couldn't see no burn in Buffalo. And he's yes. making plays. So shout out to that brother for making some plays. Maybe why I'm you just... ain't making no plays in Buffalo? We'd have kept your bitch ass. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Y'all ain't say shout out to Zay Jones. <laughs> I, I said I love me some Zay Jones. Oh, okay. You know, I, I love that's what I said. You know, I love Zay Jones, man. Come on, man. Disrespectful. <laughs> but go ahead, tell me about these damn giants. The Giants, there's something about them, man, but the Eagles, something about them too. Mm. And they got a stud wide receiver, and they got a stud quarterback, and they, they got nice running game, and their defense is strong, and they playing at home. You know what I'm saying? So that's going to be another – I think that's going to be a hell of a battle. And I can't wait to watch that game. Yeah, man. Um, that's probably one of the – I mean, there's so many great games mm -hmm. this week. I mean, they were, this whole super wild card, wild card weekends, there's been some great football. Um, and this is going to be another one of those. Uh, uh, the Eagles are dynamic to me. Jalen Hurston earned his money before the season. They didn't know what this guy was going to be to them, you know, and, and I, now I know he's looking at a big payday, you know, because without him, they're somewhat mediocre in my opinion, mm -hmm. he's going to be out there. And I think that's going to be hell. So uh, the giants coming off their big win the way they've been playing. This is going to be something to see, you know, Division game, this shit going to be tough, tough, tough. Or, you know, the thing about division games in the playoffs, they can go the other way, too. Could be a big-time ass whooping. Like, you, you know, um, and these are one of those times where I'm leaning towards a big-time ass whooping. You know what I mean? Uh, I, I'm going to go ahead and say my shit. I, 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 just, I just honestly think the Eagles are going to dominate this fucking game. Um the addition of A.J. Brown. Imagine what a real number one receiver can do for a quarterback. Mm -hmm. Are you kidding me right mm -hmm. now? We say Jalen Hurts, Jalen Hurts. They added A.J. Brown, and now Jalen Hurts earned his money. Well, God damn it, if you give him something to throw to, he can work with that. Mm -hmm. And Devontae Smith is one hell of a number two receiver. Come on, man. Shit. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> All right. So, and then, you know, got, they had the week off. Goddard had came back like week 13. He's been working his way back. So he got a little bit of rest. He's one really, really good tight end. Yeah. Um, Miles Sanders is really effective because they can throw the fucking football now. Mm -hmm. I just think they got too much for the Giants, man. I, I, You know, I love Saquon, but I think that D-line of the Eagles is going to make them so one-dimensional. They've seen Daniel Jones before. They're not going – they're not the fucking Vikings. They're right. not going to let him just run around. They see Jalen Hurts every day in practice. They know how to contain a quarterback. I, I, I just don't like this matchup for the Giants. I wish it was somebody else. 37-17 mm -hmm. uh, Eagles. Yeah, man. I mean, like, something special brewing in New York for the Giants. But I'm going to have to agree with you, Money. There's just a little too much Eagles in Philadelphia. And um, it's hard to get back-to-back -back away games you know what i'm saying and win those joints so let me get the eagles let me get them 35 let me get the giants 17 yeah i mean uh 
the Eagles, you know, I'm gonna say it right now, that's my pick to come out of the NFC. So I don't think nothing is gonna stop them from getting to that NFC championship game. It's definitely not gonna be New York Giants. I think their story ends here. I got Eagles 28-20. All right, so we moving on. One o'clock Sunday, Bills, Bengals. What's happening? Actually, I think that game is 3, 3 p.m. Three, yeah, it is 3, you're right, 3.30. Yeah, yeah. 3 o'clock on Sunday. But yeah, 3.30 Sunday. Here, here we go. What Josh Allen am I going to see? You know, I think I'm going to see a special Josh Allen who's not going to turn the ball over. The Bengals showed a little something, a little chink, as you would say, money, in their armor. Baltimore Ravens had a little something for them. The, uh, Coach McDermott is a hellified coach. I think he's going to clean up the nonsense of last week. And... That's going to be – this game's going to be a, a battle where I need the Bills to run the ball a little more. i like to see a little bit more cook. Just just give me some more run, running game, please. Um, on the Bengals side, we know what time it is. You know, Joe Burrow special. Yeah, man, I, I don't know if the defense can hold up to what Buffalo has on the offensive end. Yeah, big-time game. You know, uh, two of the top three quarterbacks in the league going head-to-head. And this is probably what you're going to see for a while. You know, uh, teams like these two teams making it to the playoffs, getting to know each other a lot, really well. So Josh Allen, got to clean up those mistakes. Um, you know, y- you're not going to get the opportunity to do that. Um, last week, you had a hungry team with no quarterback, you know, uh, but, but, but you, you kind of got that gunslinger in you when you didn't need to. I don't think you're going to get those opportunities toward the Bengals here um, because, you know, uh, Joe Burrow is going to be out there slinging it too. So uh, Buffalo's defense, I think, is the key to them winning this football game. We got a banged up Bengals O-line. Can they protect that guy? You get some pressure on him, put him in the ground, this could be the Bills day. Um, But it's going to be a fun game to watch. Yeah, it's going to be a a fun-ass game if you're a motherfucking Bills fan. We favor about five and a half, and I know motherfuckers think because we struggle with Miami that this fucking shit going to be close, but this shit ain't going to be close, people. I'm going to tell you right now, this is an ass whooping long overdue for you who day, day ain't no fucking body, okay? I'm going to tell you right now, that motherfucker can't throw from his back. He ain't that motherfucker special. You know what I'm saying? They don't have a run game. If you don't have a run game against Buffalo, shit, you're in a lot of fucking trouble, bro. And they do not. 29th in rushing in the league, this shit ain't going to be good. I know what motherfuckers thought. Oh, Monday night, they took the ball, they went down to score. Nigga, let me tell you something. Hmm. One drive. This shit going to get fucking ugly. Go ahead. Yeah, who man. you got? So, you know who I got. Who you got? <laughs> it's gonna be. I think it's going to be a close one. I think it's going to come down to the end. I like the Buffalo Bills to win by a field goal, 28-25. Ooh, yeah, that's a uh, that's a close one. I got a close one, too. But, you know, I'm picking Joey B and them Bengals. Um, I think, you know, of course, they're going to air it out. Jamar Chase going to be out there killing it in them boys. Um, and like I said, the Bills' defense, to me, is the key to this game. If you can get pressure on him, get him on the ground. They got a banged up O-line. But I think it's just going to be a little too much connecting in the air, man. I got the Bengals, 31-28 in a squeaker. This shit about to get ugly, man. It's going to get ugly, and it's going to be fucking ugly real motherfucking fast, man. So uh, the boys in blue, 41-17. Oh, man, I got to write that down. 41-17. Come get that ass whoop, nigga. <laughs> what Woo. time it is. Last game of the week. Uh, Two-story franchises. Prestigious. Mm-hmm. Cowboys, <laughs> Niners, Niners, Cowboys. Yeah, man. Uh, the 49ers, we, 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 we've... we Man, 19 is something special. Debo sent... Man, that cat is just different, man. He's just different. Some cats you look at and like, God damn, that motherfucker jump out of the screen at you, don't he? But I think right here, I think the Cowboys are on to something. We got too much. We got too much. We got we got running game. We got wide receivers. Dak. Something about this game, man. It's got me leaning to them boys. Well, you know, uh, this is another one of those who's got the bigger nuts kind of games to me. 
You know, who going to put their nuts on the table? Mm-hmm. You know, Dallas came up last week consistent. Slayed the dragon, put Tom Brady to rest. Okay. All right, we the big dog. Now you got San Francisco. Defense still playing hard. Still got the strong running game. Still got Kittle. Still got Debo Samuel. Lots of stars out there. So uh, good one to watch. Uh, I'm not going to tell you who I'm favoring yet. Let's hear what you got, Money. The Niners aren't very good against the pass. Dallas isn't very good against the run. A lot of similar matchups uh, throughout here. A um, lot of special players. I kind of like San Francisco's uh, offensive weapons a little bit better than I like Dallas offensive weapons, but I do like um, the ability that Dallas can possibly be more balanced in this game than San Francisco. I, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure um, as a smart coach, we're going to put the ball all through Brock Purdy's hands try to take away that strong running game with McCaffrey and basically just make him drop back and have to make decisions with the football. This is going to be a well-schemed up game. I'm sure that uh, D'Amico Ryans, the defensive coordinator of the 49ers, is uh, scheming away because he surely watched that film against Tampa Bay and um, seeing where Dak seen every fucking thing coming. So they're trying to hide and disguise all type of blitzes. This ought to be a fucking interesting game. Who you got? So for me, I think, you know, Brock Purdy, he's shown me something. He's special. He seems to be special right now. But I think the Cinderella slipper falls off his ass. And I think the Cowboys go in there and get that win in a close one. Um, 28 to 24. 28 to 24 Cowboys. Man, you must be reading my notes. <laughs> <laughs> Because that's my exact same score, and that's my exact same pick. I got the boys winning 28-24. I just feel like just exactly what Money said, make them make Purdy throw the football. You know, uh, he's a seventh-round pick. Yeah, he's been playing well. Yeah, they've won a lot of games. But here is where, the, the you know, they say the rubber meets the road. Where, you know, that, that, that shit is hot on your ass right now, and them Cowboys is ready. These are these these are guys who are who should be playing at this level all the time anyway. That's why it frustrates me when I see them not being consistently, you know, good football players on Dallas side or, or making good plays. You know, I see CD Lamb getting that ball. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, it's a balanced team. The Cowboys are gonna give it to them. Oh man, last time, uh before they went into Dallas, before they went into Tampa and won this game, the last time they had won a game was 1994 on the road. They went into San Francisco and beat them in Candlestick Park. New stadium, different times. And I'm just going to say that shit ain't going to fucking happen. Listen, they can't fuck with them. Brock Purdy about to just drop back and throw this bitch all over the field, mm-hmm. nigga. And he going to throw that bitch two and three yards to motherfuckers like McCaffrey and watch him run 15, 16, 20 yards. Throw that bitch like four yards to Debo and watch him run 20, 18, 19, 30, 60 yards. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Throw that motherfucker short to Kittle and watch him run 15, 20, 30, 50, 60 yards. You feel me? This shit, the, the weapons that the 49ers fucking have are something ridiculous. And then on top of that, I don't trust Dallas special teams in a fucking close game. Did you Ooh. see their kicker? Did you see their yeah, kicker? Bruh, kicking his confidence. Right. Kicking his fucking confidence. Okay. Don't tell me you got your confidence back in one week and you got to go on the road to Candlestick. Mm-hmm. Oh, they play on grass too, as a matter of fact. So uh, I'm taking the fucking Niners. I'm going to say 34. Woo, 21. So. You know what I mean? Remember what I said at the top of the show, people. So if you don't agree with me, don't even worry about it. Do your thing. Don't listen to him. He has some good <laughs> ones this week, man. And, listen, and here's the thing. Sometimes emotion you can win off of, you can't always win off emotion, especially in the playoffs. It comes down to making plays, and that sometimes it, it, it just means making a smart play. 
Mm-hmm. Motherfucker, you you one and a half yards out. How you trying to dive over the pile, nigga? What you doing? What you doing? That's not smart. You got to get low and submarine through. Like mm-hmm. that's not smart. So yeah. just just little things like that. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and that just don't make no sense. Uh, things like uh, Josh Allen, nigga. You see this motherfucker walked up on the end of the line and shit. You know what I mean? Why do you think you got time to look right and come back left when they bring in more than we can block? You know what I'm saying? Get rid of the fucking ball or just eat that shit and take the sack. Why are you trying to make a play? Fumble, pick it up, touchdown. Like, just little shit like that. Like, I know you see it coming. Why do you fuck do you think? That's arrogance. That type of shit pisses me off. Like, you know what I mean? Because I'm watching and I see it. Um, Just dumbass plays, man. You know what I mean? Like, the Geno Smith fumble. You know what I'm saying? Like, you so lax a days ago with the rock in the pocket. You know how they D-line get. You know you got to step through that shit with strength. Stop playing. Like, everything is riding on this shit right now. You got to go tit for tat with them. The first fuck up, this shit could fall off. And what happened? The first fuck up, this shit, the wheels fell off. So, y'all got anything else, man? That's it, man. Just do your job. That's it. And enjoy the weekend. Hey, man. Enjoy the weekend, everybody. Hey, man. Why y'all watching good football, man? Before it come on, head over to ConsciousByNatureApparel.com. Grab your little hoodie, little sweatshirt, some lounge gear to chill out in. Yeah. You know how you do, man. And if anything, man, just support the show. Appreciate you, man. Holla at your boy, man. That's the champ. Well, no, I'm the fucking champ. That's the scholar. That's the genius. It's a lot of shit. We don't zoom my shit moving. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, God bless y'all, everybody, man. And uh, we'll see y'all back in studio here real soon.